Hi folks, today's the last podcast on oceans. We haven't talked about all the aspects of oceans. There's just so much to, I mean, there's whole courses and scientists who spend their life studying the ocean. But of course, we've been learning about currents. But today, we're gonna, as we've been kind of visiting about this El Nino phenomenon, we're gonna talk about El Nino in the food chain. How does that affect um, living things in the oceans? The kind of our own only foray into the whole idea of how oceans work in terms of animals and critters. So let's have at it. All right, there is something called a marine food web. Essentially what's going on is we've got these things called phytoplankton. They're tiny little critters and zooplankton. I'll talk some more about that a little bit later. And these are eaten by larger fish who then are by fish, who are then subsequently eaten by larger fish. And the thing that's important to note here is this upwelling of nutrients. We've been talking about upwelling. This upwelling is what these characters feed on, the, the phytoplankton and the zooplankton. Okay, um, let's actually get a clip about what uh, phytoplankton do and how important they are to uh, the entire world, really. Not just to the marine ecosystem, but to the entire world. Even though we can't live beneath the waves, these vast bodies of water are vital to our very existence. Much of that is down to a group of ocean inhabitants that are surrounding me. Single-celled organisms, so small, they're invisible to the naked eye. They're known as phytoplankton. Although phytoplankton are no bigger than a pinhead, they're one of the most important forms of life on Earth. To understand just how important they are, take a look at them from space. Just off the British Isles, large patches of the sea are stained light green by millions upon millions of individual phytoplankton, known as blooms. These blooms appear around the world's oceans. And it's because phytoplankton are so abundant that they can affect the whole planet. Without phytoplankton in the oceans, there wouldn't be any fish or turtles swimming around. Phytoplankton is the first meal in the ocean food chain. But surprisingly, as well as being a primary source of nourishment for creatures in the sea, these tiny organisms help all animals on Earth to breathe. Phytoplankton can do this because they photosynthesize. They turn carbon dioxide and sunlight into energy in order to live. And this releases a very important byproduct, oxygen. This process takes place on a global scale. All these green patches show areas of phytoplankton and they're all producing oxygen, which fills the seas and the atmosphere. Oxygen is vital to all animals, in the sea, on land, and in the air. Phytoplankton produce something like 50% of all the oxygen on Earth, about as much as the world's forests and jungles combined. Wow, they, they are very important, aren't they? Amazing, these, uh, these little critters have such an impact on the entire world. All right, so let's um, kind of talk about this, how this relates to the El Nino effect, right? If you have an increased temperature off the coast of Peru, okay, we're just gonna, we're just gonna focus on Peru, what's gonna happen to the uh, 
population. First of all, the upwelling is slowed, so there's less upwelling. That means there's less nutrients for the phytoplankton and the zooplankton. Now remember, a phytoplankton is a tiny plant that float in the near surface waters of the ocean. And a zooplankton, kind of like, a, like a zoo, right? So that's like an animal. It's a tiny animal that lives the, in the near surface waters of the ocean. They consume phytoplankton. Okay, so the zooplankton eat the phytoplankton, and then other critters, fishies, right? They eat the zooplankton, and bigger fishies, right? That's a fish, the big mouth. Eat little fishies. So that's how that works. Okay. So um, in a El Nino year, there is less food for the fish or just the aquatic or marine life. So what they will do is they will move south for cooler water. They're looking for nutrients. And so the fish will swim. But then there's a problem. And then if the following year the temperature changes, now they're in water that's too cold for them, and they will, they will perish. They will die. Sometimes they will die because they just will not get to the feeding grounds. And then the microbial, this is the phytoplankton and the zooplankton, they can't migrate. So they essentially die. So there's just less food. And so, of course, um, the El Nino has a pretty big effect, particularly on the aquatic life. And we're just focusing here on sort of the area around South America and Peru. All right. Very short podcast. Oops, hello. Very short podcast. We are done for today. We'll have a good day. Bye.